morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Reverend Cederman from the Seattle and Kyoji Temple. Uh, and this is uh, maybe my fourth or fifth year here. Uh, and today I'm going to continue on with the uh, idea uh, of anger, uh, which is our overall concept that we wish to uh, investigate and study during the, the course of the seminar. And if you look at your schedule, what, what I will be discussing today is the armor of endurance. Now, the previous lecture uh, held by Kansei Hoshi uh, was on the mechanisms of anger, uh, the physical and mental uh, conditions of anger. Also, in discussing some ways of being able to how we deal with our own personal anger and also how we deal with other people's anger. Uh, therefore, we're going to go a little more in depth, where now we're going to study particularly what Buddhism, and in more particularly a more deeper focus, what the Lotus Sutra and our founder Nichiren and Shonen uh, have to say about that. So that is why it's titled The Armor of Endurance. If In your Lotus Sutra, if you have your Lotus Sutra, the older Murano version, which is what you have on page 208, the most famous, uh, one of the more famous recognizable quotes and passages of the Lotus Sutra speaks specifically of this uh, armor of endurance. It says, We will wear the armor of endurance because we respect and believe you. We will endure all of these difficulties in order to expound the Sutra. We will not spare even our lives. We treasure only unsurpassed enlightenment. So how does this relate to the concept of anger? Well, uh, not only in, in the situation in Buddhist that we respond to our own anger, but also in the idea of how to deal with other people's anger. And as the Lotus Sutra shows us, one of the most, uh, how do you say, greatest and also most destructive uh, signs or behaviors of anger is to actually hate the truth, to go against the truth, the enlightenment of the world found in the Lotus Sutra. So therefore, when we're talking, to put it into context, the armor of endurance is one that is trying to better their life, trying to uh, understand their frailties, trying to overcome suffering, to approach, to move towards enlightenment, and therefore getting resistance from other people. So one of the common uh, aspects of the Lotus Sutra, it says, when you try to improve yourself, people will not be supportive of you. Uh, people will actually dislike you. People will threaten you. People will, uh, in some ways, even try to kill you. Why? Because you're going against the status quo. And also, as uh, Kansei was showing, Kansei Hoshi, that this is even an animalistic nature, even on our most base nature of survival. So some people feel that even their survival uh, is being threatened by the truth of the Lotus Sutra. So therefore, please keep this, this uh, idea, this metaphor of wearing armor in, in, your, in your mind. So we're going to go a little more in depth of how and why in dealing with our own anger, and dealing with the anger of others uh, that we wear this armor and that we have this vow uh, in order to see correctly to overcome and to be able to progress to improving ourselves. Because as uh, Kansei Hoshi was saying, changing like a good medicine, changing our anger into something uh, productive or into an enlightened state of mind is not easy or else everyone would do it. Uh, if you look I was even I went to the bookshop to look at books on anger and it seems like more and more in these days people are becoming more and more frustrated which then is uh, how do you say shown in the response of anger uh, we see this with religious uh, confrontations we see this with political confrontations we see this with basic everyday opinion conversations uh, it resorts to anger as if people are moving away from enlightenment or moving away from improving themselves in the sense of humanity. Humanity is the basic idea that we are equal and that we should respect each other's feelings as we respect our own. Therefore, when other people have a, 
uh, sadness, we feel sadness. But yet anger is what erects walls and also actually kills the emotion of compassion. So therefore, anger is considered one of the three great poisons of Buddhism, greed, hatred, and ignorance. So therefore, anger is considered a very toxic, toxic, uh, how do you say, mechanism in our practice of Buddhism and that it can actually poison uh, your Buddha nature as well as poison other people's uh, lives and nature. As you can see, anger is a quick solution. So therefore, anger in, 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 a, in as of itself does not contain compassion, does not contain wisdom, in that it is our basis mind, our basis sense, and also our most reactionary uh, sense. So therefore, when we look at this, we need to understand, and this is why Buddhism and science work so well, uh, science shows us that this is actually part of our mind, part of our nature. And Buddhism shows us that enlightenment, compassion, and patience is also part of our nature. So therefore, you cannot become something that is not inherent in your nature. So if you didn't have the potential for enlightenment, you cannot attain it no matter what. So we have to, first of all, in our faith, believe that we have the potential to change and that we have the potential to attain enlightenment. So therefore, if you if you automatically think, because I've had the discussion with people that they believe that anger is is, is our one of our basic, basic um, emotions and that in any way to cultivate or see beyond that anger is, is an illusion. And that's actually in the realm of religion. They don't believe in it. But we as Buddhists, this is why faith is an important part of our practice. We have faith that the Buddha attained enlightenment and been, was able to see anger as it was, as it is, and to be able to become liberated from it. Now, one important disclaimer when studying Buddhism, as uh, Kansei was saying, we're not removing anger, the mind of anger, because it's actually uh, part of our very core uh, base human nature and even, I would say, animalistic nature, that survival mode, in that it served us very well in our uh, previous existence before uh, the age of, uh, how do you say, civilization, to save ourselves from getting killed, or in some ways to protect ourselves. But yet, we are progressing beyond that, uh, and Buddhism is seeing beyond that base state of mind. So, in the Lotus Sutra, I'd like to direct you to... Now, the Lotus Sutra is just so fascinating because we have examples of, of anger and when people react in anger, which, of course, anger itself is not uh, lonely. It has lots of other parts to it, such as jealousy. And one of the most, how do you say, amazing chapters is the uh, Devidatta chapter, where it shows that even angry people, even really jealous people, even really deluded people still have the potential to attain enlightenment. And as we'll see at the end in the conclusion, their behavior is part of our practice and that we should not despise them, such as never despising Bodhisattva, because somebody is angry, because they are uh, caught in this Ashura mind of over, you know, how do you say, so severe anger that they destroy even things that they've made and they destroy everything around them, including those things that they love and cherish because of this uncontrollable anger, that actually we should have compassion for them, uh, as difficult as that may sound. So in this lecture, what I plan on doing is, first of all, just giving you some information first from the Lotus Sutra, uh, from basic Buddhism, and then I want us to look at Nichiren Shonen and how he uh, understood anger and actually maybe some admonishments that he gave to some of his disciples. So one of the great uh, parts of being a Nichiren Buddhist is that we have the Buddha's word, we have the Buddha's teaching in the Lotus Sutra, but we also have the manifestation of those teachings in Nichiren Shonen's life. So therefore, I'm going to share with you one letter uh, that Nichiren specifically talks about not only dealing with other people's anger, but dealing with your behavior of reacting to that anger. And actually, his admonishments are very strong. So uh, I want you to keep those with you when we go through it. So uh, first, 
If we can say, uh, please turn to 206 of the Murano version of the Lotus Sutra if you have it. It's the beginning, it's the beginning of the, um, this is called the uh, Niju Gyo no Ge. So the verses, the 20 verses, the 20 lines of practice, the core teachings of Nichiren's faith and practice for overcoming difficulty. Now, anger is but one difficulty. But yet, we as Buddhists do not separate difficulty. We, se we, we simply say, overcoming the ignorance and difficulty of the world. So, the Buddha admonishes us here. That, and, and picture again the armor of endurance. Do not worry. We will expound this sutra in the dreadful war, evil world after your extinction. Ignorant people will speak ill of us abuse us and threaten us with swords or sticks, but we endure all of this. That second part, ignorant people will speak ill of us. Backbiting, cursing, all of that is but one aspect of anger. And anger, actually, as, as, as I was listening to Kansi Hoshi's uh, explanation, is almost a state of insanity. I, I consider it a state of insanity, where our original nature, our Buddha nature, which we believe and have faith in as Buddhists, is our true base of our nature, which is compassionate and wise. But that when we exist in another state of mind besides that, that is the definition of insanity, that we are not in our right state of mind. So therefore, we as Buddhists look at other people uh, as not being in their right state of mind. So this is usually... Uh, how do you say, ex explained in the phrase, ignorant people. So you'll hear that over and over in the sutra, these ignorant people, these. Uh, we don't necessarily say stupid people, we say ignorant, because that means they have yet to realize uh, the truth of what the Dharma teaches us. Ignorant people will speak ill of us. That's going to happen, because when we practice, when we maintain a certain, how many people have been, when you've cultivated and cultivated patience and, and understanding, sometimes it annoys some people because that is a direct challenge to their state of thinking. Uh, if you are an angry person, the worst thing you can come across is someone who is patient. Because uh, Buddha Shakyamuni, in the, in the early teachings, the Dhammapada, says anger begets anger, and that actually anger is likened to a fire. And the more wood you pile on it, the bigger it gets. But once again, if you if you want to maintain that fire, if there is no wood, with of course the most annoying thing would be patience, which means nobody is giving fuel to that fire, the person's anger can actually cause themselves, as you were saying, to burn themselves out, which can actually, as you were showing, stroke <laughs> and even heart attack. Um, that That is what the Buddha was saying concerning anger. And, the, of course, the next level of anger is not only just verbal anger or thinking I don't like that person or they're stupid, but the actual physical acting out of abuse us and threaten us with swords or sticks. So that, that's actually showing us the kind of states of mind of anger. We have the verbal anger, that's the mental anger, and then we even have physical anger, uh, which nowadays uh, we accord to abuse. But we will endure all of this. So when we say we will endure all of this, this is again going back to the idea of armor of endurance. And ultimately, armor of endurance means, of course, one of the great paramitas is patience. Because patience allows us to see the reality of what's happening and not uh, being involved or reactionary to it. So I heard some people talking about how they deal with anger. And a lot of them say, you know, I take a little bit step back and I don't get involved in the other person's anger, but see it for what it is. And then, uh, if you could, I'd like to turn to um, the Hotoge, which is page 193. And once again, this theme of wearing the armor of endurance means that when you practice overcoming something, especially another point that we need to add on to this as Nietzsche and Buddhists, of course, is what? The declining latter age of the law. 
the declining dharma that actually people even though you know technology is growing and and that was interesting that you were saying you know take a day off from technology and that technology because it's so quick actually makes people expect returns much quicker and if you don't react within that uh how do you say megabyte of time they become annoyed or angry with you that uh, why are you wasting my time uh so actually removing them ourselves from from that illusion uh, and seeing uh, how actually uh, the world works instead of within a megabyte uh, frame of mind, we, we can be able to cultivate better patience, not only for ourselves, because we get angry at ourselves. Now, angry is a two, anger is a two-way mirror. Not only are we angry at other people, but usually we're angry at ourselves. So even in the base kind of psychology, they say whatever you're angry with to other people is usually what you have an issue with yourself. So and that you're just reacting uh, to that. So uh, if you can go down to on page 193, the one, two, three, four, five, fifth stanza. It is difficult to keep the sutra. I shall be glad to see anyone keeping it even for a moment. So will all the Buddha, Buddhas. He will be praised by all the Buddhas. He will be a man of valor. So I want you to think about man of valor. Valor. What does that mean? We're wearing armor. There's a famous quote by Nietzsche and Shonen that there are many soldiers wearing armor, but few fight bravely. <clears throat> so that is why we call armor of endurance, the armor of patience, as compared to just the armor of war. So therefore, we as Buddhists, in the true aspect of a, a valor, which is what we consider, uh, consider the highest level of martial achievement, is that one sees the true situation and also is it protects others because he knows the frailty of others and doesn't react with anger. So therefore, true valor would be that we, under, we keep the sutra as our core. And the last part, even at the cost of our lives. He will be a man of endeavor. A man of endeavor cultivates himself is not stationary, doesn't say, okay, I'm a patient, I'm a good, I'm a nice person, doesn't delude themselves with that. They endeavor. He should be considered to have already observed the precepts. What's the first precept? Shall not kill. Do not kill. Killing is, of course, the ultimate and un irreversible part of anger. Uh, that once you kill, you remove for that time the opportunity to heal with that person. You remove the karmic opportunity to change that situation. So therefore, that, that is considered uh, one of the most uh, difficult and most severe uh, behaviors. So a person who endeavors and keeps the Lotus Sutra, wears the armor of endurance, should be considered to have already observed the precepts, precepts and practice the dutta. So dutta is a practice to release attachments. So our own anger is an attachment. Our, how do you say, base mind is an attachment. Self is an attachment. The Buddha says the, the concept of I, the concept of ego, is the core, the base of attachments, the base of suffering. He will quickly attain the enlightenment of the Buddha. Anyone who reads and recites the sutra in the future is a true son of mine. He shall be considered to live on the stage of purity and good. Anyone after my extinction who understands the meaning of the sutra will be the eyes of the worlds of gods and men. Anyone who understands after my extinction understands the sutra. That's saying... The Buddha says anyone who keeps this as their core, as their base, will be able to see the world as it is. And that's a very common uh, phrase we use in Angyoji practice is as it is. The reality beyond the ego, beyond our ignorance, beyond our uh, base nature. Anyone who expounds this sutra, even for a moment in the dreadful world, should be honored with offerings by all gods and men. Now, expounding the sutra, now when we say wear the armor of endurance, that actually when we wear armor, do you just stand around and do nothing? Armor means that you've uh, steadied yourself, that you devoted yourself 
to uh, being able to fight bravely. And even in that kind of mentality, it means that in order to be honored by the sutra, it means to expound the sutra through your daily life, through your actions, through your behavior, through your core. So therefore, then you are then you are able to be respected and should be honored by all gods and men. So that is what I'd like to, what I'm trying to confer, confer to all of you is that as our core nature, we, we, we need to understand the poisons of our mind, the poisons of our behavior to uh, steady ourselves, to wear the armor, and also to be protectors. So in order to be protectors or expounders of the sutra, we cannot be ignorant. If we do, we will become uh, like many dictators have become. Uh, they look like they're justified, wonderful, people admire them, but actually they're very cruel. Because the base nature, as you were saying, maybe the caveman nature, is to dominate, is to react, uh, to be reactionary instead of to be uh, patient and aware.